Hello and welcome back to the Cricket Nerds podcast and wow what a, a day of cricket it was yesterday. Um, so we've had two resounding results, two absolute drubbings um, and we're going to start off by talking about India versus South Africa um, which to be completely honest uh, the start of India, India's innings was was looking pretty shaky. Um, so it was, you know, this is, bear in mind, and we need to caveat this for this whole series, this is India's B team pretty much. Um, but there are a lot of players that would get into almost any country's first team. Um, and yeah, so Guy Quad and Kishan both kind of struggled. Um, mm. And then Aya got four and out. And then Rishabh Pant as well. And I, I think, yeah, I, I don't want to go into too much depth on this whole um, thing. And hello, by the way, to Zach and Benji. I realised I didn't actually say anything to you. Um, but I, I want to go into just, I want to pick up on the point of Rishabh Pant as wicketkeeper, captain, batsman in T20. Zach, what are your opinions on that? Well, he just seems to be, it, it seems as if he's declining, doesn't it? Um, the Rishabh Pant of... 2020 and 2021 isn't and even before isn't there at the moment we're used to seeing him hit like two runs a ball 50s and big scores like that and he's he's struggling to get a runner ball at the moment uh, and I, I don't know if it is the captaincy um whether it is or it isn't I don't rate him as a captain necessarily um I think he was picked to be Delhi's captain because Shreya Sai wasn't there and there wasn't really any other choice. Uh, so for him to now become India's captain, I don't know why. Uh, I, don't, I don't really see him as like the dynamic leader, um, which you need. Uh, there are plenty of other people in that team, like Shreya Sai, like Hardik Pandya, who I think would do a better job, even Dinesh Kartik. So I feel like for him as captain, it's not, it's not doing him any favours and it's kind of putting him putting on that extra burden, which may or may not be affecting his batting. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure in your opinions, Benj. Yeah, I, I, I kind of agree. I, I, I think, yeah, we have seen him as a player decline. Um, but, the, I mean, the story wasn't all about Richard Pant. I think, um, I think South Africa actually would have been quite pleased with that score. 169 for six. It's quite a low score for the this team that, that that um that India have got. Um interestingly, Decott was back in the side today after missing out uh two games. So whether he had a slight injury, injury. or was ill, was. yeah. So he wasn't just dropped, was he? So Decock's back in, which is which is interesting because he looked in really good form. Um but as as you say, I think probably without Hardik Pandya and Dinesh Kartik. India would have really struggled in this game. Like they were the only ones who really had that middle partnership um, and pulled them back into the game. And I mean, we need to not sleep on the fact that actually South Africa have a really good bowling attack. Like Ngidi, Rabada, who actually wasn't yeah, playing. Ngidi bowled um, very well. But, but Janssen, Ngidi, Pretorius, and then Shamsi and Maharaj, it's, it's, it's a fantastic um, batting lineup. Oh. And yet, Indeed, it was a uh, bowling lineup, correct? Well, they've got a good battle lineup too. Hmm. But yeah, I, I just think India would have been a bit dis disappointed for one six nine for six. Their their top four didn't really shine, um, which is interesting because these are all players that have played really well in in, in various IPL games. Um, but I mean, this game really was all about India's bowling innings, and almost the lack of brain ac application from from South Africa. I mean, targeted 170 from 20 overs. And then, I mean, just that top of the order, that top bit of the scorecard is an absolute travesty. I mean, do you want to talk us through that, James? It was it was a series of unfortunate events. Um, so, uh, Temple Boomer retires her, which is a crying shame, really. Um, I think he got hit in the elbow or had some sort of... Oh no, he was he was diving at the non-striker's end of hurt his elbow. Mm. So that's that's a shame. Um, you know, you, you don't want to see people get injured. Um, and then Quinton de Kock got run out, which is criminal. 
Um, and then Pretorius kind of throws his wicket away. He's he was completely pinned by Avesh Khan, really. And things just you know kept on going downhill from there. Um and yeah, like the quite a few cheap wickets. Um, some good bowling, it has to be said, from from India. Um, but like you know, when when the top score from South Africa was 20 off 20 by Rassi van der Dussen, you know it's not been a great day. Um, and yeah, they they got bundled all out for what was it, 80 something, 87. Yeah. So it's a miserable day. And you know, it is quite interesting though, because it brings the whole series level at yeah. two apiece. So, Zach. Who's going to be right? Me and Benji saying that it was going to be India 3-2 or you saying that it was going to be South Africa 3-2? I still think South Africa have are the ones who have more of the settled lineup than India. Um, I think they've, they've got more players who are in form. Like, it's just been a bad game for them. Um, mm. And I have got a couple of complaints. Um, one, one from South Africa being Dwayne Pretorius coming in at three because... At the moment, there's a movement going around. Uh, we saw it with the Rajasthan Royals, and we've seen it now with South Africa, to send your pinch hitter to be a number three. And the issue with that, in my opinion, is that if you lose an early wicket and you're sending this guy who's there to try and have a go, if they go out cheaply or it doesn't work, you're suddenly two down for not many. Um, especially if your other opener goes, and then you're three down for not many, and you're automatically chasing uh, the score. Whereas if your pinch hitter is is opening the batting, if they go out, it's no big deal because you're only one down. Um, so I think if it, if it works, it's great. If it doesn't work, then it's it's a bit of a risky move, um, especially when Temba Baboom was retired hurt. So, yeah, I don't think that, that played into South Africa's hands very well because they were suddenly 26 for two after five overs and they'd lost three batsmen their top three batsmen uh, and their, their banking of on Heinrich Klaassen to kind of pull things back. Um, and and the other complaint I've got is Avesh Khan not getting man of the match. I mean, to get four for 18 and not get man of the match after bowling a team out for 87. I know Dinesh Kartik, and I love Dinesh Kartik, and I'm glad he brought India back into the game. But yeah, Avesh Khan deserved man of the match for his, his bowling performance. Um, but yeah, that's, that's complaint over. It was a good win. And I do think... South Africa will still win 3 2. So, Interesting. got to stand by is, my prediction, don't I? Is Aidan Markham injured? Because. Oh, I can't remember if it was injured or did he have COVID? Or, or COVID or something? Because, like, I don't I don't think he played the last game either. And, like, for me, it just I seems, don't think he's played the top, any of the series yet. And it, it um, just seems. I think, I think he got COVID on the first right, one. He's been right. ill. I don't know if he's been it, back. It just seems foolish not having Aidan Markham, who's one of the best T20 batsmen in the world, I think, at the minute. And looks steady and looks not like getting out and has played uh, that nice anchor role for Sunrisers, and he did it in the World Cup too. Anyway, I don't think it's that choice. I don't think it's yeah, that choice. fine. But if he's back in, um, it's interesting what you say, Zach, about sending your pinch hitter at number three, um, and it it, it it brings us on quite nicely to the Netherlands versus England ODI series. Mm. Um, if we just flip over back into Europe, um, and talking about sort of a steady batting lineup and having a sort of rock to work with in at that number three role when you lose an early wicket, which is exactly what happened to England. Um, so England versus New Zealand. Um, it's, Netherlands. It's Netherlands, yep. I wouldn't say it's a full strength England side. Um, missing the likes of Bairstow, Root, Stokes, um, Wokes, who are either, um, an archer through injury or being in that test side. Um, but Jason Roy and Phil Salt um, opening the innings. So, I mean, Phil Salt is sort of standing in being that John, Johnny Bairstow role. And Jason Roy falls very early, bowled through the gate by his cousin, Snater. That's a little fact. Essex yeah. versus uh, Essex versus Surrey. Um, but then, I mean, it was just a bit of bullying, really, from England. Like, Phil Salt, David Milan, Joss Butler all hit big hundreds. Mm. We're not going to talk about Owen Morgan. And then Liam Livingston came out and hit 66 off 22 balls, uh, which ended up with England hitting the highest ever ODI score, 498 for 
two short of the magic 500 number that no one has quite yet done in 50 overs. Um, but but what, it was yeah. very close. It was only, it was a gust was a, of wind and a couple of inches away from 500. Um, it was. I, you're right. It was bullying. Um, it kind of, it seemed like it was maybe, I don't know, like a prem team playing against a village team. That's kind of how it felt. It just, there were there were class differences there, and I mean you have, you've got to feel for Netherlands because everywhere they would put the ball, Joss Butler just you know smacked it straight back over their heads. It was um, it was pretty brutal. And Liam Livingston then made Joss Butler look like an anchor, which is a bit terrifying, really. Um, yeah, I just, something, well, something I want to talk about again. You know, I I, I like talking about captains that have failed. Um, <laughs> because you know, talked about and now, now Morgan. I just want to touch on the fact that when you look at that side, um, Roy, Salt, Milan, Butler, Livingston, Ali Curran, Willie, Rashid, Topley, they all kind of earn their space there. I don't think that Owen Morgan has really merited his space in that side as a pure batsman for the last couple of years. Um, and I don't think that's a controversial thing to say. I think it's you know very much if he wasn't the captain, he'd have been dropped. Definitely. Because like you think we've got, yeah, like a player like Stokes that could come in at five perfectly there. You could shunt Butler down, have Bearstow in at four. Like there we've got some amazing players that are in the test side right now that very, very easily yeah. kind of need to make it in that squad over but over Morgan. Zach, what are you thinking? <laughs> Well, England at the moment have a production line of white ball players. Phil Salt is one of those players who comes into the side and looks like a world-class player. Um, I know he's playing against, no, nothing against the Netherlands, but they're not quite the standard of, say, in New Zealand or in Australia or in India. Um, but he comes into the side and he's able to make a match-winning 100 Um David Milan as well, he scores a big 100 today and he's not not necessarily one of the most exciting batsmen in English cricket, and but he still manages to make 100. And you've got all these players who haven't played um, and even featured in that series against Pakistan last year um, who, who could also have filled in as well. So there's so many players, so much potential. And I think you're right, Owen Morgan is keeping maybe certain players out of the team, out of the squad even, Um However, you want him in and around the squad because of his mentality, because of how he reads the game. And I don't know whether he can perform that same role off the pitch as kind of like an assistant coach to uh, Matthew Motts. I, I don't know. Um, but it is an interesting one. He's not going to be playing all year as well. He said he's going to be taking time out of the game, uh, I think, through injury. Uh, so he's going to be in and out of the side. And I don't know if that will affect the balance. But that aside, England... England can afford to have Morgan in the team because of how well everyone else is doing. Mm. And if Morgan's uh, role is thinking, I'm just going to go out and get a golden duck and then let everyone else back, that's not too bad, is it? Because everyone else is great. Yeah. I just think, like, like Owen Morgan, like, the, the question for me is, should he be in the World Cup T20 squad in November? And at the minute, judging by his cricket, I don't think he should be. And, 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 I, and personally, I would much prefer to see Morgan step down as captain and take on a more of a strategic back room role because yeah, he's got a great cricket brain. No one's doubting that he's, he's good. He's got a great mentality of how to approach the game of, of, of cricket and, and, and especially in this white ball format. But I just don't think his cricket is, is up to that standard. Like you've, you, you've even got players like we've not even mentioned Harry Brook who's sitting in the sidelines of the test match team is also a phenomenal white ball player. You've got Joe Clark and Ben Duckett and Knotts who are knocking on the door to get into that side. You've got, you've got players all, you've, you've got Tom Curran to come back from injury. You've, you've got players all around. You've got Archer. There's so many players that, that need that spot. And, and, and as we've said in this side, this is such a great scorecard that's gone down and that's without Bearstow Root. Stokes, who I think would walk into that side any day of the week. Um, so as you say, I, I, th I think, yeah, Morgan is definitely taking someone's spot in that team. Um, so yeah, it was, it was interesting. Um, what, what do you think of England's bowling lineup with having 
three left arm seamers. <laughs> I thought it was quite an interesting move, actually, mm. um, because I, I don't think we've ever done it before. Just had we didn't have a single right arm seamer, um, which potentially goes into like the the whole statisticians handbook. Like they, I, I'm sure some of the stats monkeys will quite like not like that. He's like, oh, left arm seamers do better in white ball and stuff. Um, I think I quite like having the mixture. I think it's useful just to have a bit of everything if you can. Um, in, in a perfect world, everybody's an all-rounder and you have one of each type of bowling as well, where like you've got someone doing left arm wrist spin as well. Um, but yeah, I think it, it seemed to work and it seemed to cause them problems. I think the, um, the ability for the the left-handed bowler to obviously they can go over the wicket and keep it very tight lines either having it nip away a bit or coming into the pads bringing that lbw in or they can go around the wicket and have that really wide angle um to the right hander and that can cause quite a few issues like we saw that with trent bolt um in the ipl and in the test match and today david willie um was doing that quite effectively and reese topley just that wide angle can just cause a few problems and can um, get you driving a bit too far away from your pads, I think. So that, that was quite interesting. Um, Zach, I don't know what your things, your things, your what, My what, things your are um, that the only thing England are missing really, I don't really mind having three left armers. It's like if England didn't have a single left armor, no one would be talking about it. If they just had right armors, then it wouldn't be a problem. Uh, so I don't really mind having three left armors. I think the one thing that's missing is the extra pace uh, of a Markwood or a Jofra Archer to provide that 90, 95 mile per hour burst, which is very effective in the middle overs of a of a one day match mm. or a T20 mm. match. Um, Brian Cars is there, who bowls a quick ball. Yeah, yeah. So th- there are people in the squad, and and I guess it is how England what view this game. Um, the next World Cup is going to be happening in a year's time. So it's it's still a while away, but it might be the opportunity to try someone like a Bryden cast, throw him in the team for a game or two um, and see if he has an impact because England's batting is so strong that I don't see us being intimidated by any Netherlands score. Um, and again, not taking anything away from the Netherlands, uh, England are just very good at what they do in the white ball format at the moment. Um, yeah, I, like you see, Josh Butler today getting 162 off 70 balls. Yes, he smashed every record. Um, however, he we've seen him take apart world class bowling lineups. Um, and that he's just when he gets in this run of form that he's in at the moment, he's unstoppable. Um, mm-hmm. probably the best white ball player in the world by a long way. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to hear in the comments what you think, whether you think there's anyone who could potentially match up to, to Butler's credentials as a white ball player. Um, but yeah, he's he's just something else, isn't he? So yeah, I've, a great game. I've got a cricket nurse question, which isn't from the comments, but it's me asking. <laughs> Okay. Go on, man. Cricket this question. Will Joss Butler eclipse A.B. de Villiers as the best white ball batter of, of, of all time? It's uh, a good question. I'm not sure. A very good question. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to let the comments decide on that one. Yeah. They're different. Um, answer the comments. Because, because I think I, I think at the minute we could safely say that probably due to just pure legacy and all the records, A.B. de Villiers is the best white ball batter ever. At this stage, I would say, agree. Mm. Yeah. Do we think? Do we think Joss Butler will? Do we think Joss Butler will overtake? I think and, and outshine his legacy. If Joss Butler beats AB de Villiers' record for the fastest century in a one-day international, then probably. Um, but I, I think that the thing that stands Joss Butler and AB de Villiers in good stead is they're able to score runs against any bowling lineup. It doesn't matter who the bowler is, they back themselves to smack the ball all over the place and score those quick runs. Um, They do it in different manners, though. Uh, Like, A.B. de Villiers is Mr. 360, can play outrageous shots all around the ground, whereas Joss Butler is more like a bully, just absolutely hammer it down the ground. Um, 
and also flick it over his head if he wants. So that they're, they're, yeah, they're. I would say they're the best two white ball bowl batters ever. Um, but James, what's your opinion? Um, I'm going to say I have to just agree with you. Actually, I think um, the the thing that stands AB apart is his innovation. I think um, when he was when he was at his best, you literally couldn't bowl anywhere. Like it didn't matter if you absolutely nailed your wide Yorker, he'd hit it for six behind square on the offside. It was ridiculous. And so I think um, the fact that he was potentially the innovator of that was also very significant. But um, yeah, it's, it's a definitely a good question. And like, I'd also like to know what people's thoughts are. Maybe not here, but down in the comments or wherever. I'd like to know what people think about the importance of batting as deep as we have. Like, we were batting David Willey at what nine, and David Willey has opened before. Um, he's batted at three and four for like RCB. So, you know, we bat so deep. We didn't even need Moeen mm. Ali today to get a ridiculous score. So that's another interesting thing. Not a whole lot to think about in terms of Netherlands um, innings. Just wow. all the only thing I want to say is good to see David Milan bowling some. Some stinky leg spin and getting a wicket with his foot with his uh, ball, ball in ODI cricket. So um, I love the yeah, fact that the the, I love the fact that Owen Morgan got his overs wrong and is like, oh no, some current stranded on nine overs. Ah, I took it to David Milan. He'll, he'll yeah. took a pie down for the last. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, that's good yeah, though. it was it was good fun. But yeah, cool. I think that's about it then. Come good, good chat there. Um, like and subscribe. We've got more cricket content to come. We'll be covering the rest of the England Netherlands series. We'll be covering the rest of the South Africa India series. And we'll be covering the rest of the New Zealand England series. Um, that's all exciting things to come in the future. We've got some social media things that we want to do. We'll eventually do some of us playing actual cricket as well. Although today, all of our games are probably going to get rained off. Um, leave cricket notes questions below. Subscribe. We're approaching that 330 mark. Uh, to get 330 by the end of the summer 333 <laughs> that's the that's the key that's it yeah Triple Nelson. Okay. that's it so that is all and um, we'll see you later bye